Take a minute now to stop. Put your hands together. Pat your feet if it work. And sing along with the St. John Baptist Church Youth Choir as we give them the highest praise. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised.
To give him the glory, give him the glory. It makes us so happy, happy. Mm -hmm. Good morning, St. John. We are the Rogers family. I am Deacon Wilfred Rogers. I'm Winston Rogers. And I'm Skankin Rogers. And these are this week's announcements. Happy 4th of July. Let us celebrate our freedom in Christ, this Independence Day. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Skankin Corinthians 3, 17. July is School Supply Month. To prepare the children for the upcoming 23-24 school year, St. John Baptist Church is sponsoring the school supply drive for the entire month of July. Each Sunday in July, we will be requesting the following.
colored pencils and crayons, one subject notebooks, glue sticks and pink erasers, pencils and ink pens, headphones, or cash. Please place all of your donated school supplies in the box located in the vestibule or drop them off in the church office. Thank you. St. John Preparatory School is hiring. Open positions for a St. John Preschool Director, teacher for two-year-olds, a teacher for three-year-olds. Apply now. Submit your letter of application and resume to St. John Baptist Church at sc.rr.com. The deadline to submit is Friday, July 14th. Pastor Graham, we have a thank you note. Pastor Graham, Reverend Counts, Reverend Canty, Mr. Donnell Edwards, and all the St. John family, friends, and beyond. My family and I wish to express our heartfelt appreciation for the many acts of kindness, encouraging words, and sympathy shown during the passing of our loved one, Sherman E. Van Dyke, Jr. And this comes from Sister Vonda Scott, Van Dyke, and family. We have another thank you note. Dear St. John Church family, I am so grateful for the love and kindness shown to me in celebrating of my birthday. You are the best. May the Lord continue to richly scour you with his blessing. Love, Pastor Jamie O'Graham. St. John Baptist Church Sunday morning announcements. We're looking for volunteers to read and record the church announcements on Sunday mornings beginning August 2023. Contact Deacon Virgil Wallace for details, and you can sign up at the church welcome desk. The South Carolina Congress of Christian Education will be held July 9th through 14th at the Brooklyn Baptist Church, 1066 Sunset Boulevard in West Columbia. Sign up for classes in the vestibule, and a virtual class is also included for ages 6 through adults. Contact Wanda Turner and Allison Boone for more information. Happy birthday to all our four score members for the month of July. John White, Wallace Brown, Maggie McCoy, Betty Morris, Holly Mae Scott, and Claritha Laurie. Best wishes to all of those who are celebrating a birthday this month. This week's weekly Bible verse. Brothers and sisters, God has called you to freedom. Hear the call and do not spoil this gift by using your liberty to engage in what your flesh desires. Instead, use it to serve each other as Jesus taught us through love. Galatians 5th chapter, 13th verse. And this concludes this morning announcements. Everyone have a great week. day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Clap your hands all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king above all the earth. We're here to worship our God, praise our God because he's worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going out of the same, he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. We're here to be blessed. We're here to see a change. We're here to see healing. We're here to see deliverance. We're here to see salvation. We are here to experience the Lord. He is awesome. He is great. He is greatly to be praised. And we give him all the glory, the honor this morning because he is worthy of our praise. Woke us up this morning. Clothe us in our right mind. Heart beating right on time. The Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise them all creatures here below. Reverend Candy is going to come at this time. Give us the invocation.
Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you this hour to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've sent our way. We didn't deserve it, but you gave it to us anyway. You woke us up this morning, we didn't deserve it. You gave us food to eat, we didn't deserve it. You put food, you put clothes on our backs, we didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve your son Jesus. Leave glory to come and die for our many sins. We didn't deserve it, but you did. And we say thank you. Thank you now, Lord, we're gathered here to praise your name. Yes. Doesn't matter what we got on. Doesn't matter where we were last night. What matters is we're here right now. Lord, somebody's hungry for the word. Somebody's thirsty for the word. Let the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart, be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. Certainly praise God for the prayer of Reverend Canty. Now it is time that we continue to praise and worship. Our choir was going to come at this time. and Let us continue to lift him up. Giving is a part of worship. We can give at any time during the service. Our media ministry will give and I'll give you an opportunity to show you how the different ways we can give at this time. So we just want to ask that you let's worship and praise our God because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This song says, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Oh, I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live.
service just one more time. Hallelujah. We have been given a name that's above every name. A name that heals, a name that provides, a name that protects, and a name that delivers. That name is Jesus. And we come to call on his name this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. So this morning, we call the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
você of triumph. He's an awesome God. He's a great God. His name is Jesus. If you call him, he'll answer. If you call him, he'll come. Come to your rescue. 
Hallelujah. Let's give it up for this great choir. These musicians. Glory be to God. Most of all, let's give it up for Jesus. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The author and the finisher of our faith. Call on the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. He's a way maker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Call on the name of Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. Hallelujah. There is no other name in heaven or earth whereby men might be saved other than the name Jesus. Jesus, 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 hallelujah, Jesus, yes, 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 he's all right, he's all right, he's all right, Jesus, Jesus. Glory be to God. Jesus. King of kings. Jesus. Lord of lords. Jesus. Savior. And our God. Jesus. We give him thanks and praise. We give him glory. He's worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. We give thanks and praises because I'm saved and on the Lord's side. We give honor to all of our deacons, trustees, deaconesses, first ladies, sister, Graham, ministers, wives, and husbands, to all of our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, to the media ministry, the ushers, choirs, musicians, members, saints, and guests, honored guests. We greet you at this hour in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord. We ask that you return with us. To Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. I'm reading the messenger translation. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Jesus came down the mountain with the cheers of the crowd still ringing in his ears. Then a leper appeared and went to his knees before Jesus, praying, Master, if you want to, you can heal my body. Jesus reached out and touched him. Somebody say touched. Saying, I want to be clean. Then and there, all signs of the leprosy were gone. And these words become our message. I want to ask that you would look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, reach out and touch someone. Amen. Reach out and touch someone. A touch has power. On well, last week, we learned in Matthew chapter, in Mark chapter 10, the value of the power of the children receiving a touch from Jesus. Yes, a touch from Jesus has power. In a time where the COVID-19 pandemic has left so many people isolated and lonely and touch-deprived, Jesus shows us the importance of a touch. Jesus shows us the value and the power of a divine human touch. Yes, Jesus is divine, but he's also human. This leper, who's been isolated from family and friends, isolated from society and people, cries out to Jesus for healing and wholeness. And the method of healing is an applied touch from the master. And I know you're wondering, is this so? 
Is this true? Will a simple touch do? Saints, I think we should take seriously this message today while we're reeling and rocking in what many are calling a second pandemic, which is the mental illness crisis. And in the midst of this mental illness crisis, where many are suffering from depression and anxiety and stress, Jesus comes to show us the simple solution, a righteous remedy, a practical prescription. Touch. 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 Somebody say the touch, the power of touch. What are you talking about, Pastor? The experts have said that humans are social creatures. And touch plays an important role in their development and communication. And for many people, the deprivation of human touch may have resulted in a negative mental health effects. Look at the power of physical touch. You no, know, in pandemic, we've been away and we've been spread and we've been uh, uh, separated for so long. But look at the power of physical touch. Experts say that physical touch releases oxytocin, the, the, the hormone known for promoting emotional bonding to others, hormone known for reducing stress or calming the nervous system, a touch slows down the heartbeat, lowers blood pressure, as well as lowers uh, cortisol, our stress hormones. It lowers it, which reduces stress and anxiety, thus reducing the risk factors of mental illness. Somebody say the touch has power. A touch can be defined in many ways. A touch can mean to bring into or come into physical contact with a person, place, or thing. The tree's branches touch the ground. His hands touch her shoulders. Touch can also mean to, to come in verbal contact with someone. Therefore, you can verbally touch someone over the phone or the internet, FaceTime, or, 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 or you can touch someone in their Verbally touch someone in their presence. Reach out and touch someone. One of the major telephone companies used this very words, these very words as an advertisement tool. Reach out. Reach out and touch someone. Touch can also uh, mean to affect or influence someone's life. For example, your attitude affects the people around you. You have, hallelujah, you have uh, 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 numerous stories where a young man or woman said, my, my first grade teacher, my third grade teacher, my deacon, my coach, my Sunday school teacher, or my pastor has greatly influenced my life. I was on the downward road. I felt like giving up. But this person or that person encouraged me, gave me hope, made me to believe in myself. Yes, they have touched my life in a positive way. Whether it's a physical touch or a touch as in a point of verbal communication, we all need a touch sometimes. Hallelujah. Then again, we need to, uh, to touch other people in the sense that they feel a part of our lives, a part of our community, a part of our church. So we think about hospitality and how people meet and greet our honor guests coming in at the door. That is a power, a positive power touch moment so that what we can make feel, people feel that they're welcome into the house of our God. When was the last time you had a hug or a pat on the back or an encouraging word? To be in line with the message, when was the last time you gave someone a hug or a pat on the back or an encouraging word? Hallelujah. 
When was the last time you encouraged someone? When was the last time you reached out and touched someone? When was the last time you made a difference in somebody's life? The mission of the church is to reach out and touch the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. Looking at the background of our text, Matthew records Jesus teaching and preaching what we would call the great sermon on the mount. However, after the sermon is over, after the benediction is made, Jesus is confronted by a leper. The leper confronts Jesus after the service is over, after Jesus comes down from his mount mountaintop experience. There are some people in our society who will not come to your church. There are some people who, who do not feel welcome or comfortable in your church. That they feel unworthy. They feel that they belong in the valley. They belong in their mess. They belong in their condition. And listen, now that the pandemic has caused so many to stay away physically from the church, guess what? Many of them are stuck. They're trapped and they're isolated like this leper in our text. So the question is, ask today, what will you do after the service is over? after the benediction is turned, after you have been with the Lord. What will you, will you leave your Jesus at the church? Will you leave your testimony at the doors of the church? Will you leave your faith, your power, your anointing at the church? Jesus uh, commissioned us to, to, to go into all the world and make disciples of all men, women, boys and girls, go into all the world, reach out and touch someone with the power of the gospel. Why did Matthew record this encounter of Jesus after he comes down from the mountaintop experience? Perhaps he wants us to know that while it is important for us to meet Jesus and see Jesus and feel the power of Jesus and be blessed by Jesus in the church, it is equally important for us to go beyond the walls of the church and reach out and touch those outside of the church. Somebody ought to say yes. This is the power of the church to reach out and touch someone. We need to reach out and touch someone. Touch someone who is burdened or broken or bound. Touch someone who's hurting. Touch someone who's lonely. Touch someone who's depressed. Touch someone who's discouraged and disappointed. We need to reach out and touch someone who's sick and struggling and suffering. Touch someone who feels defeated. Because the text suggests to us that through Christ, we have the ability to make a difference. We have the ability to solve problems. We have the ability to heal the sick, to heal the hurt, to heal the broken and the, hate and the brokenhearted. We have the ability through Christ. We have the ability to heal community ills, social ills, and the wounded spirits, but we don't always do it. The man said to Jesus, you can heal me if you want to. He knew Jesus could do it, for he had heard how Jesus healed the, the lame man, gave sight to the blind, raised the dead from their graves. And so the man confronts Jesus with this statement, Jesus, I know you can heal me if you want to. You can do it. You can heal me if you want to. And guess what? We, too, are confronted every day with the same statement. If you want to, you can heal me. When we see daughters against mothers and sons against fathers, they're crying out like this leper. If you want to, you can heal me. When we see our children dropping out of school and our children striking out in violence, they're crying out like this leper. If you want to, you can heal me. Teachers, when you see our boys and girls unruly in the classroom, they're crying out like this leper. If you want to, you can heal me. Brothers and sisters, when we see mothers and fathers strung out on drugs, when we see them on crack or alcohol or some other illegal substance, we, they need our help. 
And they're crying out like this leper, if you want to, you can heal me. Yes, the oppressed and the outcast, the sinner and the suffering are asking this question, church. If you want to, you can be a big brother or a big sister. If you want to, you can be a mother or a father to that little boy or girl who's in need or who needs love. If you want to. You can bring that drug addict off the streets if you want to. You can lead a child back home if you want to. You can bring a family back together if you want to. You can bring that sinner to Christ. If you want to, you can help someone find a homeless, find a, a, a home. If you can help a friend be, find a friend, a friendless person find a friend. If you want to, you can turn somebody's frown into a smile, somebody's midnight into day, somebody's sorrows into joy. If you want to, you can make somebody's day a little bit brighter, someone's load a little bit lighter. For the songwriter said, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Yes, you can. If you just reach out and touch. Somebody say yes. Sometimes we in the church think that we're too good. For those who are lowly and poor and needy and out, outcasts, we think that we're too good for the drunkard or the junkie, the prostitute or the pimp. But they need our help. In fact, we were there at one time or another. That is what evangelism is all about. Reaching out to the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. This lowly outcast confronts Jesus, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. This leper says to Jesus, I know you're a big time preacher. I know you're the hottest thing in town. Everybody's talking about you. Your name has, has gone out to every mountain and molehill, to every valley and village, to every hamlet and home, to every crack and corner. And it's even reached our colony on the outskirts of town. I know what you can do, Jesus. You heal the sick. You raise the dead. 5,000 souls you fed. And I'm a leper on the outside of the, of the society, barred from family and friends. You can heal me. You can change my life. You can give me a brand new heart and a brand new start. If you want to, you can heal me. Somebody needs this word this morning. You need to know that whatever your circumstances or condition, whatever your calamities, your infirmities, your affliction, uh, God can heal you because he still sits on the throne and he still has all power in his hands. Say yeah, somebody. And just because he hadn't done it yet doesn't mean he can't do it. Mama used to say you can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. He's a God you can't hurry. He'll be there, don't you worry. May not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Look at this man. Nobody wanted to be near him. Nobody wanted to be bothered with him. Nobody wanted to touch him. Remember, lepers, unlike cancer, AIDS, and HIV victims, were not allowed to live in society. They were permitted, not permitted to live with family and friends. They were not allowed to live in the context of community because they had what we would call a communicable disease. Almost like what COVID did to us. It was contagious. And so he lived in a colony on the outskirts of, 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 of town with other lepers. And, and when they came out of the colony, they had to cry out, unclean, unclean. So here's a man, nobody wanted to be near, nobody wanted to touch him, but Jesus did. How many can remember when you were a nobody, when you were an outcast, when you were a little poor country boy girl, when you, and you can remember when you were in sin, when you were down and out, didn't have a dime, didn't have a friend in the world, nobody wanted to deal with you, nobody wanted to touch you, nobody wanted to bother you, but Jesus did. There are some lepers in St. John this morning. You may not have ulcerous sores like this leper. 
but you feel like a leper. You see, there are two kinds of leprosy. The first kind is an external kind that shows up in patches of dry skin. These patches or, or, or sores would, would, would turn white and afterwards your hair would fall out. The sores then would become ulcerated and ooze out with blood. But the second type of leprosy is represented by the degeneration of human tissue. It would get so bad that your fingers, hand, or feet would rot away. So you may not have the disease leprosy, but you are still like this leper in the sense that you feel like you are not a part of the family, the community, the, the church. People don't make you feel welcome because you are not like them. And it makes you feel like a leper. Sometimes your family falls apart. You end up in divorce and people make you feel like some kind of strange leper in their midst. Sometimes family push you aside and it makes you feel like a leper. Somebody's been convicted of a crime, served their time, and you're still looking down on them. It makes them feel like a leper. Somebody's come up with, come down with AIDS or somebody's uh, born on the wrong side of the track and you make them feel like a leper. Somebody's born on a wedlock. Somebody's too poor to have a college education and you make them feel like a leper. They don't speak well or they don't sing well and you, don't, and you make them feel like a leper. They don't dress well. They don't smell like you smell. They don't look like you don't look. They don't live in your neighborhood and you make them feel like a leper. We don't want to be bothered with them. We don't want to touch them, but Jesus will. Won't he touch you? Won't he bless you? Won't he transform your life? Won't he save you? Won't he deliver you? Somebody say yes. Look at the man. Jesus said, you can, Jesus, he said, Jesus, you can heal me if you want to. Aren't you glad Jesus wants to heal the man? Aren't you glad Jesus wants to heal you right now? Aren't you glad Jesus doesn't mind touching you? Text says, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. And immediately his leprosy was healed. Say yeah, somebody. He was made whole. Oh, church, I'm glad Jesus will reach out and touch you. There's power in his touch. How many know there's power in his touch? I'm glad the leper man was not the only one Jesus touched. Say yeah, somebody. He touched Peter's mother-in-law. She went and the fever went away. He touched the blind man, gave him his sight. He touched the deaf man, he began to hear. He touched the dumb man, he began to speak. He touched Jairus' daughter, raised her from the dead. He touched the widow's son's coffin, brought him back to life. He touched the little children, gave them a blessing. Hallelujah. And he touched me one Thursday night. I was filthy. I was dirty. Nobody wanted to touch me. Nobody wanted to be bothered with me. But Jesus touched me. He picked me up, turned me around, planted my feet on solid ground. He touched me. And now I can say, oh, he touched me. And all the joy flood my soul. Not something happened. And right now I know he touched me and made me whole. How many glad he touched you? How many glad he made you whole? Say yes. Won't he touch you? Won't he heal you? Won't he deliver you? Say yes. The Bible said the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. If the Lord touched you, 
say so. If the Lord plucked your feet out the mire clay, say so. If the Lord gave you grace and glory, say so. If the Lord delivered you, say so. If the Lord saved you, say so. If you've been delivered by the Lord, say so. If you've been redeemed, you are to say yeah, somebody. Thank God he touched me. A touch from Jesus will open blinded eyes. A touch from Jesus will make the lame man walk. A touch from Jesus will clean up a community. A touch from Jesus will empower the weak. A touch from Jesus will restore a marriage. A touch from Jesus will give you wholeness and healing. Somebody say yes. Say yes. And now that he touched you, you ought to go forth and touch somebody else. Go forth and tell somebody else that he touched me. Tell somebody else that he's a healer. Tell somebody else he's a deliverer. Tell somebody else he's a way maker. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. He touched me. And since he touched me, you ought to go to the crack house. You ought to go to the state house. You ought to go to the white house. You ought to go to the whole house and bring somebody to the Lord's house. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yes. He's able. He's able to touch you right now. To bless you right now. To save you right now. To deliver you right now. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. Now is the time. Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Do it now while you have a chance. Now while the blood is running warm in your vein. Now while the Holy Spirit is prodding you and, pr and pricking you and, and leading you to him. Will you come at this time? As you stand to your feet, there may be someone out of the ark of safety. No God on your side, no heaven in your view. There may be someone who wants to be a part of the family of God, the body of Christ, St. John Baptist Church. As the choir sings the invitation to him, it's your opportunity to come, accept, receive, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Touch me. If you want to join the church, just step out. Oh, just step out. Me. Step out. If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. He'll save you. He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll give you a brand new heart. Brand new stuff. Will you come today? Will you come today? Spirit of God is speaking he to your heart. Come while the blood is running warm in your vein. Come now. Hallelujah. Don't let this moment pass you by. Do it now while you have a chance. Come to Jesus. Come. Join the body of Christ. Come. Be a part of the family of God. Come. Be a part of the body of Christ. He's able right now. Something Hallelujah. Yes. Will there be one? He touched me. And Hallelujah. Me On the stands of those of you who desire prayer, will you come that we might he pray the prayer of faith together? That we might touch and agree. Oh, yes, he that me. we might walk by faith and not by sight and oh, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly soul. over and above oh, all that we could ever ask think or even imagine happened. of him and now I know yes yes yes
Praise Him. Praise Him. We're going to call these names out in prayer today. We're praying for the Booker family. We're praying for Sister Van Dyke and family, those who are in bereavement. We're praying for Bessie Johnson, Teresa Thomas, Brother Tim McGorder, Margaret Canty, Dwayne Everett, Francis Hughes, Juanetta Wise, Isadora Lambright, Travis Cannon, who's in intensive care, Wayne Brooks, Sister Gail Wilson, Sister Waltine Whitmire, and family. We pray at this time that God may touch them even where they are. We know that God is able, and perhaps you're standing in the gap for somebody who we did not call by name. You can call their names right now as we prepare to go into prayer. He is able. Father, we thank you. Father, we come once again in the mighty name of thy son, Jesus. Thanking you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. We thank you, O oh God, for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we know right now that you have 10,000 blessings in your hands just to satisfy us all. And so as we stand in need right now, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you remember those names we've called. Some of those names are in bereavement. They've lost loved ones. We ask God that you will comfort them, strengthen and keep them in your care. Some of those names are sick, and in the valley of affliction right now. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you would let your blood cover from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We know there's power in your blood. We know there's deliverance in your blood. Let your blood cover and cast out every affliction that's plaguing their bodies even now. God, we thank you. That, Lord, it's your will that they be healed because you were wounded for their transgressions. You were bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was upon you. And by your stripes, they are healed. We decree and declare that healing right now. Somebody standing around the circle under the sound of my voice needs you for a doctor right now. Lord, we know right now that they might have had a bad report, but God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch right now, that you would heal right now, that you would deliver right now, that you would set the captives free right now. And so we bind that affliction right now. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke cancer and COVID and the Lord rebuke hypertension and high blood pressure. The Lord rebuke heart disease and kidney disease. The Lord rebuke mental illness and, and stress and depression. The Lord rebukes in the mighty name of Jesus every affliction because his name is above every name. His name is above every cancer, every form of cancer. His name is above every affliction. And so, God, we thank you that, yes, you were wounded for their transgressions, bruised for their iniquities. Chastisement of their peace was upon you, and by your stripes, they're already healed. We feel the virtue flowing from your throne. We feel your power transforming lives. In the name of Jesus, pray for those who are in the valley of despair, those who are hopeless, those who are depressed, those who are in a dark moment. We ask in the name of Jesus, give them hope. Help them to step out on faith. Help them to trust you right now, even when they can't trace you. 
Give them joy that will flow like a river. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, we praise you that you're blessing that home. You're healing and blessing that marriage. You're bringing that family together in sacred stability. You're bringing that child home. You're bringing that husband home. You're bringing that wife. You're bringing that mother, that father. We ask in your name. Have your way right now. Father God, somebody needs you for a financial blessing. Open that door to that new job, that new promotion, that new opportunity. Shut the door of poverty, disappointment, and discouragement. Father, we know you can open doors that no man can shut. You can shut doors that no man can open. And God, we just want to tell you thank you. Father, we come at this moment asking, oh God, that as we go around and as we touch right now, we ask God that your healing touch, that your power will touch everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless right now. We know there's a power in the touch, oh God. And we touch by faith that you're healing right now, that you're delivering right now, that you're setting free right now in the name of Jesus. That you're healing that home, that you're bringing that family back together. We thank you right now that you're blessing only as you can in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for restoration. We thank you right now for wholeness. We thank you right now for deliverance. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. We bless you, oh God. We thank you for the touch. We thank you for the touch, the transforming touch. Hallelujah, the, the transforming touch. We thank you for the touch right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By your faith, you are made whole. By your faith, you are delivered. By your faith, you are set free. By your faith, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Because you are worthy of our praise. Bless now as only you can. In Jesus' name, we pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And the people of God said amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Something happened now. I know he touched me and me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Saints, as we prepare our hearts for communion, we ask that you would look at your responsive reading at this time. I will read the first, you'll read the second, and we'll read the third together. Matthew chapter 26, 
verses 26 through 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. For this, all, to, all together, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and yes, you are our eternal home. We come to you, O oh Father, in the mighty name of thy Son, Jesus, thanking you for your awesome love, your wonderful grace, and that while we were yet sinners, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus gave his life that we might have a right to eternal life, the tree of life. So we thank you right now that Jesus shed his blood, sacrificed his life, was crucified on a cross that we might be delivered, saved, healed, and set free. And now, God, we thank you for these elements, this bread that represents your body, this fruit of the vine that represents your blood, that as we partake of your body and your blood, Lord, that we might show forth your death, your burial, your resurrection until you come again. Father, we ask that as we partake of your body and your blood, there are any ailment or sickness in us, it will be cleansed and healed and canceled out in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, God, that you would just have your way and we'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And we say amen, amen, and amen. same night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and said, take, eat, this is my body. In that same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it as you should do, show forth his death, burial, and resurrection until he comes again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Hallelujah. Yes, you have won the victory. 
Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. Hallelujah. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen. You are the risen. You are the risen. Seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the risen. You are the risen. Hey, hallelujah. You have won. Oh, hallelujah. You have won. Death could not hold you. You are the risen. You are the risen. Seated in majesty, seated in majesty, hallelujah, you are the risen, clap your hands and praise him, clap your hands and praise our God, because he's worthy of our praise, amen, we're not going to hold you long, we want to just re remind you that uh, Wednesday night Bible study is on hold for the summer. We will res resume on in the middle mid mid August. Want to also thank Brother Minister Patterson for teaching our Wednesday night Bible study this past week, and we thank uh, Reverend Counts for providing service for Brother Sherman uh, Van Van Dyke uh, Brother Sherman's Van Dyke service. Want to thank you again, Reverend Counts. Amen. Amen. Want to also. Uh, say that on the front page of our uh, state newspaper, uh, congratulations to Tracy Oliver for writing a movie strip, Go Girls Trip. She also wrote Barbershop, Blackening. Uh, she's the daughter of our very own Dr. Barry and Gwen Oliver. Let's give it up for her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yours truly will be preaching on uh, the welcome night service of our South Carolina Baptist Congress of Christian Education on next Sunday evening at the Brooklyn Baptist Church. Uh, our praise team will accompany us. We're asking our leaders and as many members as can to come along on next Sunday evening. Amen. Let us continue to pray for the Bazard family, uh, the Booker family. Sister Bazard's funeral will be here on Thursday. Uh, we praise God for uh, seeing some members here today, but I'm going to hold that for our uh, honored guests to come forth at this time. So we're going to ask. The Kimson Lewis Price Family Ministry Units are hosting our greeting this month. Sister Audra Kimson is coming forth. We recognize our honored guests. Good afternoon, actually, good morning, St. John. <laughs> Again, it is a pleasure to welcome our honored guests this morning, and we do have cards from several visitors here. And let's start with Mr. Russell Jenkins, and when I, please call you, when I call your name, please stand and remain standing until you have been acknowledged by our pastor. Mr. Russell Jenkins, he is from Hagerston, Maryland, 
Hagerstown, excuse me, Hagerstown, Maryland, and he is the brother of Sister Susan Lewis, and he's from the Dorsey Christian Chapel. Next, we have Mr. Peter Moore, Jr. He's from, he's from Brandon, Brandywine, Maryland, and he is the guest of Miss Daph Daphne Watts, and he's a member of the First Baptist Church in Glen, Glen, Glen Garden, Maryland. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have Miss Sharon Moore. She's from Brand Brandywood, Maryland. Brandywine, excuse me. <laughs> Brandywine, Maryland. And she's the guest of Miss Daphne Watts, and she's also a member of the First Baptist Church in Gardendale, Maryland. Okay. Next we have Miss Mary Ann Gilchrist. She's from Oxen, Oxen here, Maryland. And she's a member, I guess, of Miss Daphne Watts, and also a member of Mount Mount Gatley, Maryland. Gat Mount Gatley Church. Thank you. We also have Miss Marietta Llewellyn, and she is from San Diego, California, and she's also a guest of Miss Daphne Watts. Okay. Chris, her son Christian. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Reverend Watts' family, amen. Praise God for you, amen, yes. And we also would like to have our state representative, Leon Howard, he's also visiting us today. If you could please stand. <laughs> Pastor Graham, these are our honored guests. Anybody else who did not sign a card, please stand. Thank you so much, Sister Audrey. I want to say to you who thought it not robbery to come and share with us in our worship service today, thank you so much for coming. You could have chosen any other church to come to go to worship today, but you came to St. John. Pray that you have uh, received the blessing today while you were here. Uh, may you, uh, we pray that you will come again. And if uh, you desire to locate here and join St. John, we're certainly happy to have, we'll be certainly happy to have you. I want to also say that as you leave today, uh, someone from our hospitality team will greet you and give you a little bit more information about our church. We thank you so much for coming. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Very soon. So now we're going to have Reverend Likes. He's going to come. He's going to pray over our offering. For those of you who, do not, who did not get a chance to give, you can give at any time. You can give now, or as you leave today, uh, the ushers will have and also the trustees will be out in the vestibule. So give as given unto the Lord. Praise God from all blessing flow. We thank you, dear God, for allowing us to be able to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Now, dear God, we ask that you continue to bless those that give and those who are unable to give. And maybe to be given the next time. These will be asked in your son Jesus' name. Baby heart say amen. 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 While we remain standing, I want to thank Deacon Wilford Rogers and Sons, Stanton and uh, Winston for the announcements this morning. Heard that booming voice? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, health, healing, wholeness, prosperity, success, long life with satisfaction and salvation. 
until we meet again. And we all say amen, amen, and amen. We don't see you anymore until next Sunday. Happy 4th. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Our choir is going to sing it this time. Thank you.